everyone, welcome to the Ginger Snap Series Month of Halloween, where I'll be discussing the Elm Street franchise for you guys in a very blunt way. I'm your host, Stephen Harold, and in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys my review for Wes Craven's New Nightmare, which was released on September 9th, 1994, and had celebrated its 30th anniversary, and it was also directed by Wes Craven himself. So after New Line killed off Freddy and Freddy's Dead, Wes Craven was given a nice little task of doing another Elm Street film. Basically, they were just not satisfied with uh, how Freddy met his demise and Freddy's dead. So New Line Cinema and Wes Craven decided to join forces on the, on the 10th anniversary of the original's release and decided to release a newer film. Now, of course, this film is very much a meta film, uh, having actors who were in the first film basically playing themselves in this film. And... It raised an interesting thing. It was an interesting topic, especially since this film predated Scream by two years, which had meta references all around, all throughout that time. Now, what do I personally think about this film? Because this is another film that I remember watching when I was a kid, and now watching it as an adult, especially re-reviewing it for this franchise. It's about time I give it a review. So, I think it's only fitting we talk about it. So here is my review for Wes Craven's New Nightmare. So explaining the story of this movie is going to be a little bit complex because essentially it is a biopic type of film where you have the actors from the first film and others from the franchise or whatever, even studio execs from New Line Cinema, are playing themselves. So yeah, basically they are making a new Freddy film because Wes Craven's been having nightmares, and Heather Langenkamp's character is going through a lot, and then a lot of people just happen to be disappearing, and this demonic entity that has grown itself attached to the Freddy Krueger character haunts their dreams now. Um, and it's up to Heather Langenkamp to play Nancy again and stop this Freddy once and for all. So, uh, for the story of this film, it's... It's interesting because, I mean, like, we, we haven't seen a film like this before where it's so meta. And we're able to watch the characters who are playing basically themselves in the film. And, you know, having to also play certain characters too. I mean, like, Robert England is playing top, like, two roles. He's playing himself and Freddy Krueger. So, you know, to each his own. But for the story, it's it's unique in a way, and there's not much to explain. I mean, like, it's it's another Nightmare on Elm Street film. You know, it's an anniversary film, too, the 10th anniversary. So, the story being meta, I guess would only make sense, especially since, you know, the last film ended the way it did, right? So, story's not bad. I can actually get behind it. Heather Langenkamp plays herself in this film. Um, shockingly enough, this is probably her best performance in any of the other films in the Elm Street franchise. I mean, like, she's playing a mom who also has starred in a bunch of movies. Um, I, I do love the, for, the, the, the perspective of how she's on a talk show and, you know, yeah, she's in Nightmare on Elm Street. And then all of a sudden, Robert England's Freddy shows up, right? And then he's just hounded by people wanting his autograph and she's like okay come on Robert we're gonna be late and it's it's interesting especially since there was a time where she had a stalker at this time and it's unique to play herself and of course being this mom who is having a son who is being terrorized in his sleep and his dreams and you know it could be because of the film or the franchise the character but it's some entity that looks like Freddy that is doing it so for her to come back into this franchise, but basically playing herself, is a pretty risky thing, but it works, especially for what this film's story is. So Heather Langenkamp did a, an amazing job in this film, and I can't in good faith say that she did a bad job just playing herself. I mean, like, yeah, she's playing herself, whatever, but it's a fictional part of herself. She's not actually going after a real demon that looks like Freddy. But she does a great job in this film. 
Then you have her son, Dylan, who is played by Miko Hughes. Now, if you remember Miko Hughes, he was the uh, little baby kid, Gage, in Pet Cemetery, and uh, also in Kindergarten Cop, where, you know, he said, boys have a penis, girls have a vagina. I wonder if that film is um, canceled nowadays. I don't fucking know. Anywho, back to this film. He plays a, you know, a convincing kid, right? Um, I remember when I was younger and watching this movie that he annoyed me. He annoyed the fuck out of me. Like, I can't stand this fucking kid. But now, knowing what the movie is and being more mature about it, you know, I can actually get behind his character. I don't mind that kid actor whatsoever. Uh, Miko Hughes also had done a fan film called Dylan's New Nightmare, which is amazing. So if you guys haven't checked that out, check that out on YouTube. It's actually really fucking good. And Miko Hughes plays himself, right? So, well, plays, you know, the son, right? Dylan. Or, yeah, Dylan. Um, but for what the kid can do in this film, it's actually not bad. And I actually don't have a problem with him in this film at all. I've grown to like him. Now we have Robert England, who is playing Freddy Krueger, or this demonic uh, entity that looks like Freddy Krueger in this film. Freddy Krueger, obviously, as we all know, has a very different look in this film. I mean, his red and green sweater is a lot more prominent with the green. Um, he wears a trench coat that also has a red-green stripe pattern in the inside. He dons a green fedora. His burn makeup is not really burnt. It's more like his skin has, like, torn and split in sections. He has demonic eyes. There's even a scene where, when he's defeated, his fucking face grows into this, like, monstrosity and I think I feel like that's his real form but one of the biggest things about his redesign was also the fact that not only is he wearing leather pants and leather boots and whatever but his glove also got a redesign it's not even a glove it's literally his fucking hand and the addition of the blade on the thumb is interesting in practice but I remember when I was a kid they had this glove for Halloween and I put it on to be Freddy that year and that thumb blade was just the worst i mean like you know you have your regular blades that's all cool and dandy but that fucking thumb blade it just got everywhere right so for that pros er, prospect it's interesting to have his design now of course this is not the same freddy we saw in all the other films this is a demonic entity that has latched itself to the freddy Krueger character and has resembled him and I don't mind his performance in this movie. I know it's Robert England playing him again, but he seemed more menacing in a way that we haven't seen in a while. I mean, like, fucking, when was the last time Freddy was actually menacing, right? I mean, when you have Freddy's Dead, uh, Part 5, and then Parts of Part 4. Freddy's last time he was menacing was basically 2 and 3. But other than that, like, I dig the look. It looks good. And... It's another great performance by Robert England. So there's not that much gore and kills in this film. Uh, we have the we have Chase's death in the truck where he is driving and he falls asleep, um, and the glove just kind of claws at him from the seat and whatever. And then we have the babysitter's um, death, who, which is a resemblance to Tina's death in the first film, which is probably the the best death in the fucking film. Um, other than that, like. The gore, there's not much of it. The deaths, there's not much. But it's not bad for what it is. I mean, like, you're supposed to go realistic with this film that's supposed to be very meta. But it's not bad. At the end of it all, when it comes to this film, it was a great little anniversary film. Um, the characters, of course, they're just actors playing themselves in characterized roles. Um, we have a story that fits very well for what this film is supposed to be about. Uh, Freddy looks pretty menacing. Uh, Heather Langenkamp does a great performance. Miko Hughes is great as the son Dylan. Um, the only thing that lacks is, you know, we don't get that many kills, obviously. Um, sometimes the story seems like it's going here and there or whatever, right? Uh, but the one thing I will have to say, sadly, about this film is that this film doesn't really fit into the franchise. I mean, they basically only have little caveats of, like, Freddy's Dead by a poster or Nightmare 3 or whatever, but they really hearken to that first film. And yes, it's the anniversary of that first film, 
but they don't really do much with it. Um, I mean, you bring John Saxton back in, you got Wes Craven there, you got you know, fucking Sarah Risher as an executive at New Line, you have Bob Shea, of course, and you have all these things that make this really meta, but the fact that this film became a meta film to this already established franchise, why did you decide to just do something a little bit too different? And that's the thing that kind of holds it back. It doesn't really feel like a, a Nightmare on Elm Street film. It feels like a Hollywood fantasized fan film about the actors, you know, basically like, what if it's if they decided to make a Terminator movie, or a Terminator sequel, that was basically the actors, you know, on the set of a new Terminator film, and they harken back to Terminator 2. You know, it, it just feels weird. It's, it's a Terminator film, but it's not at the same time. Like, this is basically a Nightmare on Elm Street film in the franchise, but it's not really a Nightmare on Elm Street. And just, there's a lot of things that happen in this film that raises too many questions. Where it's just like, okay, well, Miko Hughes did Pet Cemetery before Wes Craven's New Nightmare came out, and Heather Langenkamp's playing herself, so wasn't there another fucking Miko Hughes? Or whatever? I don't know. It raises too many questions. It can get convoluted at times. But other than that, the movie is still a good hit. It's a good fucking film to actually watch, and you can replay it from time to time. It's just, when it comes to the meta thing, it's nice that they tried it with this, and then would develop Scream two years later, and it would work for that. It just doesn't work here. So, for my rating, I'm going to give Wes Craven's New Nightmare a 6.5 out of 10. So tell me guys, what did you guys think of Wes Craven's New Nightmare? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you like this video, make sure you give it the thumbs up and subscribe for more content. And don't forget to hit that bell notification so you can get notified about all the other videos coming out on the channel, especially when it comes to the Elm Street franchise. Other than that guys, that's it for me. This has been the Ginger Snap Series Month of Horrorween. I will talk to you guys later, and remember, whatever you do, don't fall asleep.